environments in all of college football. And the Montana Grizzlies have lost just one time in four seasons here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. But senior linebacker LJ Fort leads a punishing Purple Panthers defense from Northern Iowa into Missoula. It's playoff football tonight on ESPN, where the winner moves on to the semifinals and the loser goes home. Welcome to the NCAA Football Championship presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Here in Missoula, Montana for the FCS quarterfinals between Northern Iowa and Montana at Washington Grizzly Stadium. A look at the brackets in the quarterfinals and you will see that the winner of this game will match up against the winner of Montana State against Sam Houston State. The bottom half of the bracket features Maine against Georgia Southern and Lehigh against North Dakota State. And hello to everybody, Justin Kutcher alongside Tom Logan, Bill and Tom. I am so happy to be here in Missoula, Montana, because I've heard so much about this place. I have heard it is one of the best venues in all of college football, whether it's FBS or FCS. And you know this place quite well, and your memories aren't exactly fond. Well, no, they're not. In fact, I played my last ever college football game in 1995 in this stadium behind us. And I can tell you this, we fumbled the opening snap, it was 48 to nothing at halftime and with two minutes to go in the game it was 48 nothing at halftime and not a single person had left the stadium 15 degrees below zero ice and snow falling out of the sky and the fans are relentless they are unmerciful to the opposition and tonight that opposition is northern iowa and the panthers from cedar falls northern iowa they actually play in a dome now they come out here. It's 23 degrees outside. You talked about all those factors. Yeah. What do they have to do to kind of control their own emotions? Really two things, I believe. They have to have a plan in place to deal with communication on offense. It is going to be loud. The field is sunken down, and the stands butt up right against the sideline. So communication is going to be a key. Secondly, cannot afford to give up big plays on defense and get down early. If they do, the crowd will jump all over them. It's one of the reasons why Montana is so successful in December in the playoffs. The fans have been lining up since early this morning. This is a night game. They're used to playing at 12 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. They've had all day to get ready. It's Northern Iowa, Montana, coming up next. Welcome back here to Missoula, Montana. The fans pregame getting ready to come inside to Washington Grizzly Stadium. This place will be packed. It seats 25,217. They're expecting over 26,000 here. When they came onto the field, Tom Luganville, it was quite a scene. You told me that this place gets so loud because it butts up right to a mountain. Yeah. You think there are 80,000 here, and it's true. And you look at what Montana's done in the quarterfinals. They're 10 and 1, but 10 and 0 here at home. And it's and it's an environment that you can't duplicate or prepare for at any other venue across the football championship subdivision. That's why it's so daunting and so difficult to adjust to once you get into the flow of the game. Because as we mentioned, and we will show it throughout the evening, the crowd is right on top of you and they are relentless. Look at that student section right there. They are jumping. As a matter of fact, they're jumping on cement. There are no seats over there because they broke every seat. They took them out. Forget about it. We're not doing this anymore. You think they're ready for some football here in Missoula? Robin Flugrad in his second season, the Big Sky Coach of the Year this year. Coach Flugrad had been here before as an assistant, spent a lot of time at Washington State, at Oregon under Mike Bellotti as an assistant coach. Come back here to Montana and has this program right back where the Montana faithful expect it to be. A pressure situation for him taking over for Bobby Houck, who left for UNLV. When you take over a great program, there's pressure to keep it great. Brody McKnight will kick off for Montana. Carlos Anderson, Jared Herring are back deep for Northern Iowa. Montana's in that maroon and black. Northern Iowa in the purple and white. Montana won the toss. They elected to defer, and that's why Northern Iowa will receive to open up this ballgame. 
We are set for football. Anderson takes it from the 12. Tries to cut it back up the middle. He'll bring it up to the 28-yard line. A 16-yard return there for Carlos Anderson. This Northern Iowa team is led by their quarterback, Terrell Rennie, who's one of those dual-threat quarterbacks. Well, he's a dual-threat, and he's really good at improvising and keeping plays alive when things break down. What we're going to find out early about him is how he handles noise and if he's able to play under pressure and under duress, because I would expect Montana to come after him early. Carlos Anderson in the backfield with Rennie. First down. It's Rennie keeping it. Hit in the backfield for a loss by Caleb McSurdy. A loss of four on the play. It's going to be a lot of misdirection with this offense, as you saw right there, but great assignment football by Montana on defense. And Caleb McSurdy, 118 now tackles on the season from his middle linebacker position, a first-team All-American at the FCS level. Second down and 14. High snap, the handoff is to Anderson. And Anderson gets up to the 25-yard line. Alex Shaw with a tackle. A one-yard run there by Anderson. How about the impact players in this game? Well, David Johnson for Northern Iowa. Just a freshman, a really impressive-looking athlete. About 6'3", 215 pounds. Very dynamic in the passing game, but a downhill straight-ahead runner in the run game. Caleb McSurdy, we just mentioned, with the opening tackle of the ball game. First team All-American, the leader of a linebacker-driven defense for Montana. Third and 13. Rennie drops back. Gets out of the pocket. This is where he's dangerous. And Rennie brings it up to the 34-yard line. Tackled by Shaw, his second tackle. A nine-yard run brings up fourth down. Now keep in mind, Terrell Rennie's not very tall. So if they obstruct his view, you can bet he's going to tuck the football and run. And Montana did a great job right there of keeping a visual on him and making sure they gang tackled him to force the punt. Kyle Bernard on to punt. Javen Sambrano back deep for Montana, standing at his own 29-yard line. Fair catch called for and made at the 24-yard line. 42-yard punt brings up Montana and Jordan Johnson onto the field for the Grizzlies. Jordan Johnson, very similar to Rennie at the quarterback position. A good athlete. They're going to use him an awful lot in the quarterback run game, the zone read, some option game, but also a very efficient passer. Offensive coordinator Jonathan Smith says he's made huge strides this year. One of the reasons why they've gotten to this point into the number four ranked team in the FCS. Peter Wynn in the backfield on first down. The handoff is to Win, and Win is hit right away. Gets back the line of scrimmage. Ben Boothby, number 43, defensive tackle, makes the stop. Northern Iowa, you look at the stick marks right there on Boothby, number 43. There's no repainting that helmet. There's some pride in those licks. Northern Iowa, very good, strong defensive team. Also a linebacker-led team. It's going to be tough for both of these ball clubs to run the football here tonight. Second down and 11. Well, it's off to Gerald Kemp. And Kemp gets beyond the 30 up to the 32-yard line. Garrett Scott with the tackle. Now, Gerald Kemp, number 17 there. You'll see him come in as a backup quarterback in a designed run roll from the direct snap out of the Wildcat, but utilized as a utility back as well as you just saw on the fly sweep there getting around the perimeter and coming up on a third and short here. Third down and two. It's Kemp in motion again. Kemp, the toss, and a fumble. And it's going to be, looks like it's Northern Iowa, James Conley with a recovery. When it is the first mistake of the night, James Conley, number 32, there to recover the fumble. Quarterback Jordy Johnson makes the right move here. Pulls, pitches, but it's a late pitch, not handled well by Gerald Kemp, number 17. 
And now they don't give it actually to Northern Iowa. So it's not a fumble. Instead, on to punt is McKnight. McKnight, the rugby, rugby style punter. Taken by Varma Sony. Sony brings it out to the 45 yard line. A 37 yard punt by McKnight. It's Northern Iowa ball when we come back. No score here, first quarter, Northern Iowa and Montana. Let's go back to that play, Tom. You and I both thought it was a fumble, and we were confused why it wasn't ruled a fumble. Yeah, you can see right here, it's a little bit of an errant pitch. And number 32, James Conley, is gonna come right over the top, and he looks from our angle, and this is our angle as we saw it right here, to recover the football right there, and then ends up squirting out the back, and Joe Kemp recovers it. Big recovery for Montana there. So good field position right now for Northern Iowa at their own 44. Running the pass on first down towards the sideline, complete to his tight end, Darian Howard. And Howard picks up the first down with a 14-yard pickup. I think that's what Tyrell Rennie has to do in the passing game. Short, controlled passes where he can get the ball out of his hand quickly. Montana's going to come after him with a lot of different looks. They're an upfield pressure team. Can't afford to sit back there in the pocket. That was a nice job right there on first down. First and 10, Anderson and David Johnson in the backfield. High snap. Rennie keeps it. Rennie able to break a tackle, bring it across the 40, up to the 37-yard line, picks up six, tackled by Bobby Alt. This is a big offensive line that Northern Iowa brings here to Missoula, 6'7", 6'5", 3'10", 295, 315, and along the defensive front for Montana, Ryan Featherston, 235 at the end spot, Bobby Alt, we just mentioned, only 240. Can Montana hold up at the point of attack as this game wears on? Second down and four. Austin Wells in motion. Rennie takes it down the side, and he puts the first down. That ball almost looked like it hit the man in motion, Austin Wells. It almost hit the man in motion, Austin Wells, but number 80, the tight end to the left of your screen, does a great job right here locking up. Maintaining position, number 32 there, Alex Shaw from Montana. It's a great job maintaining the block downfield. And Northern Iowa quieting this crowd down a little bit, mounting the first drive since their first series. David Johnson now in in the backfield. First and 10, ball on the 27-yard line. Rennie. Passing over the middle. That looked like it should have been pass interference. No flag came out. Jermaine Johnson on the coverage. The intended receiver is Terrell Sinkfield. Terrell Sinkfield, number two, is going to be matched up versus number two, Tremaine Johnson. Just runs a quick four-yard slant route to the inside. And that is pass interference, and that should have been called. Was it called by Tremaine Johnson, the All-American? An interception machine, if you will, 6'3", 210. Coach Bluegrad at Montana feels like he's a legitimate NFL guy and one that could remain at the cornerback position despite those measurables. 14 career interceptions, just one this year. Second and 10. Rennie dumps it off, completes the pass. Jared Herring to the end zone. Touchdown. 27 yard touchdown pass to Jared Herring, and this crowd goes silent. Montana takes a chance and they bring the kitchen sink at Northern Iowa right now and as you can tell silence from this crowd exactly what Northern Iowa needed to do to come into this game Tyler Sievertson on now for the extra point 7-0 Northern Iowa leads Montana and stuns this crowd Terrell Rennie Finds Jared Herring coming across the field. Herring does the rest. Had two touchdowns last week, one so far tonight.
7-0, Northern Iowa leads Montana here with 9.22 to go in the first quarter. Tyler Sieberton will kick off with Javen Sambrano and Peter Wynn back deep. A 27-yard touchdown pass to Jared Herring puts Northern Iowa on the board first and really silences this crowd. Unbelievable how fast they go from making a ton of noise to being completely silent. Sievertson, a short kick. Wynn takes it from the 13. Wynn gets the outside. And he's going to be marked down at the 36 yard line. Let's go back to that touchdown. Well, let's take a look at what they do. They're going to come after him here with pressure, and they're going to run a shell in the back end. So they're playing inside out right there. And ends up, what ends up happening is the corner to the right side of your screen, right here. He sinks too far back. He should have been up here, and he would have been there to take this crossing route. And ends up voiding the underneath coverage. That's a busting coverage on the back end for Montana. On first down, the handoff to Peter Wynn. Hit right away at the line of scrimmage. No pickup for Wynn. Tackle by Ben Boothby, number 43, his second tackle of the game. His coach calls him a fire hydrant. Why? Because he's 6 feet, 280 pounds. <laughs> it's a good description. Second down and 10. Jordan Johnson forced out of the pocket on the run. Throws, completes it to win. And win brings up to the 42. Tom, how about the impact players in this side? Well, Javen Sambrano, number 16, the wide receiver for Montana. He is the vertical threat. He's the guy that can take it down the field and really stretch this Montana offense. A speed guy, LJ Fort. 167 tackles on the year coming into this game. A middle linebacker force, much like Caleb McSurdy for Montana on the Northern Iowa side. Third down and five. Empty backfield as Wynn goes in motion. Johnson dancing around, trying to buy some time. Now a run for it. He's got the first down and gets out of bounds. A nine-yard run by Jordan Johnson on third and five. Jordan Johnson is not very tall. And so when his view becomes obstructed, he's going to be very quick to leave the pocket, create, and make some plays. And he does a great job of that right here. And then realizing they're in man-to-man -man coverage downfield. There's nobody to account for me. Move the chains. On first down, the handoff up the middle. And that's Jordan Canada. Canada brings it up to the 45, picks up four. Jordan Canada had a good week last week, and Central Arkansas had two touchdowns. They're going to run the football by committee here. Peter Wynn, Dan Moore, Jordan Canada all have specific traits and all positives in this offense. Second down and six. They don't snap it. They would have had Boothby offsides. Play clock down to 10. Canada again up the middle. That burst of speed gets the first down. Up to 36, a nine-yard run. Garrett Scott, the strong safety with the tackle. Well, the 170-yard, 170 170-pound 170 freshman out of West Covina, California, hitting the hole quickly, decisively. Great job up front. Big number 76, Danny Kissler, 6'8", 315, coming around in their G scheme where the guard pulls around. Nice series being mounted here by Montana. First and ten, Peter Wynn back in in the backfield here for the Grizzlies. Play clock down to ten again. Uncharacteristic for Montana. Johnson taking a chance over the middle, incomplete. Dropped by Greg Hart at a tight end. And that was a really well-thrown football by Jordan Johnson. He's calm, poised in the pocket. Delivered a strike on the deep seam route from Hardy, 86 right there. Does a great job settling into the open area. Again, well-thrown ball, foot in front of the numbers. I think that Greg Hardy thought he was going to have a collision in front of him. You see Robin Flugrad, the head coach there, talking to his junior tight end. Gerald Kemp now in at quarterback, running the Wildcat. 
And he gets hit by Chris Jepson right away. A loss of one on the play. So now it's third down and 11 here for Montana. Jordan Johnson back in at quarterback. Johnson back to pass again. Going up. Incomplete. Looking for Sam Gratton, number eight. Barmasoni on the coverage. So now you've got fourth and 11 coming up. Ball on the 37 yard line. And Northern Iowa did a good job there of disguising the coverage, looking like they were going to be in a one deep safety look and backing off at the last second prior to the snap into a cover two, two deep safety look. Causing Jordan Johnson to hold on to the football a little bit. Brody McKnight on to punt. Varmasoni back deep, standing in his own nine yard line. Good punt by McKnight. And the fair catch is made at the seven yard line. So Northern Iowa quiets the crowd, makes a defensive stop. They get the ball back, leading 7 0 here in the first. Northern Iowa backed up at their own seven. Darrell Rennie on first down. The handoff to Carlos Anderson. And Anderson brings it up to the 11-yard line, picks up four, tackled by Bo Tully, the free safety. Northern Iowa has to have success on early downs because if this crowd gets involved and you're backed up on third and plus eight, that's going to create a lot of problems for you on offense. So winning on first down as they did right there takes a little bit of pressure off you and gives you more options on your later downs. Second down and six, this crowd making noise. Rennie running the option, he keeps it. And he gets tackled at the 14, gets hit by Caleb McSurdy. And McSurdy picks up his second tackle, a three yard run by Rennie. But Caleb McSurdy, he's a football playing dude, and all he does is see ball, get ball. You see him shed the tackle, coming up, lay a lick, wrap the arms. Such a sound, fundamental tackler. Third down and three. Expect this place to get very loud. Rennie back to pass. And it's incomplete, nearly intercepted by Houston Roots. The pass intended for Terrell Sinkfield. Well, that would have been absolutely huge for Montana if Roots number 20 could have come up with that play. But maybe, more importantly, field position is now going to swing. Backing up Northern Iowa, you get the ball in quality field position, get this crowd back into it a little bit with this stop. Kyle Bernard to punt from his own end zone. Jabin Sambrano. Stand his own 48. Good punt by Bernard. Sambrano takes it at the 37. Sambrano cuts it back. Up the middle. Takes it up to the 40. Marked down the 39 of Northern Iowa. 25-yard return. Sambrano, number 16. We talked about him as the vertical threat. Does a great job right here making the first defender miss. Navigating through traffic. Securing the football tightly when he gets in the crowd. And you talk about field position and putting your offense on a short field. Sam Brando does that right here. Number 16 for Montana. As the Grizz start off at the 39-yard line. Jordan Canada now in the backfield. Play action. Johnson rolling out. And it looked like he may have been across the line of scrimmage when he threw that ball. And there is the flag coming from the near sideline. The officials discuss this right here. You see the officiating crew out of the Southern Conference. 
at the FCS level. That's Robin Flugrad. Illegal forward pass by the offense number 10. It's a five-yard penalty. He spotted a foul. Loss of down. Second down. Initially, this play starts off wonderfully. Tremendous ball handling by Jordy Johnson. But now when he gets to this point, he's got to make a decision to run it. He's got some real estate in front of him. Instead, he holds onto the ball late, tries to sneak one in, loses his awareness of where he was at on the field. And now you see Coach Flugrad there, a little disappointed with the lack of headiness from Jordan Johnson. And Tom, it's interesting. Here you have Montana playing at home, and they seem to be the team that's been flustered, not Northern Iowa. They have. They haven't been able to get into a rhythm, haven't, haven't had that big spark play that can potentially kind of change the face of a game. That's what's caused some problems for them, and it's really helped Northern Iowa from a crowd standpoint. I mean, earlier in this game, we couldn't hear ourselves talk. Now, I could whisper to you and you could hear what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. And when you hurt yourself and you back yourself up, it can just take you out of rhythm. It, your game plan, everything you came in with, you start to say, what, it's not working. What, what do we got to go to here? And now this play is under review. I'm going to see the yard marker up near the top of your screen, right there on the 39-yard line. You can see it right in there. And keep in mind, on this review, it's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. The call on the field is it was a legal forward pass. And that Jordy Johnson, the Montana quarterback, was past the line of scrimmage when he delivered the football. Now, it looks like from here that it was the correct call. Yep. And the flag actually came from this side of the field. See a little bit more of a close-up look here now the officials you see him sit standing there he's standing on the marker and you see Jordy Johnson cross in front of him when he makes that throw so you see the official to the top of your screen he's right here now watch Jordy Johnson see his foot right there it's gonna be a questionable call Is it conclusive enough to overturn the call in the field? As we see Coach Flugrad talking to his players. He had him huddled up a few moments ago, and I'll tell you what he's saying. Guys, let's just calm down. After further review, the quarterback was not beyond the line of scrimmage. Ball the in the middle of the field. Second down. The camp is starting to side. Well, I guess there was enough visual evidence to overturn it. Yeah, and considering the, the last two angles that we had taken a look at, I would actually tend to agree. When you look at it from beyond the line of scrimmage as opposed to down the line or behind the line of scrimmage, it gives you a much clearer look. But Coach Flugrad talking to his team had an opportunity on the sideline there to calm him down. Hey, this is our venue, our home. We're in control here. Let's just do what we do and execute what you've been coached to do. Second down in 10, Jordan Canada in the backfield with Jordan Johnson. Johnson gets it out to Canada. Nice job cutting it back. Canada with that effort gets it up to the 35-yard line, picks up four. Garrett Scott with his third tackle of the night. Both of these teams are really good on the defensive side of the football, and the real reason why they're good is they're good open field tacklers. See Canada right here doing a great job with leg drive. At only 170 pounds, he doesn't have a lot of power just yet. He's a young freshman, going to be a really good player in this program for years to come. Third down and six. Again, Montana changed the play at the line. Play clock down to eight. Johnson, pump fake, throws over the middle, completes to Canada, picks up the first down and drives L.J. Fort backwards. A nine-yard pickup on the pass to Canada, and that freshman just took the nation's leading tackler backwards. Oh, he certainly did, and this is a great job by Jordan Johnson, taking what the defense gives him, knowing where his outlet is, and throwing a catchable ball, letting his playmakers do the rest with the ball in their hands. First down and 10 here for Montana. Handoff to Canada. 
Canada able to dive forward up to the 23, picks up three. LJ Fort with his third tackle. One more tackle for LJ Fort, and he will set the single season school record. He's got 170 tackles now on the season. Again, Montana changing the play. We were told they were going to go with the play clock at 22 seconds or so. So far, <laughs> that has not been the case. And off uh, Canada, who gets wrapped up by Ben Boothby. A loss of one. Boothby, a great job penetrating the gap and getting into that backfield. Now Boothby doing a good job. A lot of penetration up front. Again, the, the G scheme with big 76 to guard. Pulling around, that's Danny Kissler. Pick 43, Ben Boothby sneaking behind the block, doing a good job getting skinny through the gap. But I like the fact that Montana's not abandoning the run just yet. Things haven't gone their way, but they're sticking to the plan. Third down and eight. Johnson forced out of the pocket, plenty of room to run. Johnson gets the block, has the first down. Still on his feet. Johnson gets taken down at the two. We had just mentioned earlier that Jordan Johnson's got to do a good job of having some awareness and understanding the moment. He did a great job there of recognizing that Northern Iowa was in man-to-man -man defense. Nobody accounted for the quarterback. When you escape the pocket, you got to take off and run. First and goal from the one. Dan Moore is in with Jordan Canada in the backfield. Moore, 5'11", 235. Canada with the carry, and he gets stuck. L.J. Fort was there on the gang tackle with August Haydenfeld. So second and goal from the one here for Montana. If you think you're going to run L.J. Fort into the end zone, you better bring your big boy pads. He's like running into a wall. Big number 24, Northern Iowa. It's Canada again. And Canada trying with a second effort, can't get in. So third and goal coming up. Ben Boothby there again for the stop. This Northern Iowa team prides itself on a bend but don't break defense. They're very close to breaking, but they're also very close to forcing a fourth and goal. And I was really surprised that Montana and quarterback Jordan Johnson didn't pull at that time. I think he would have walked into the end zone if he would have kept that football around the edge as Northern Iowa's really crowding tackle box. Now it's just Canada in the backfield on third and goal. Canada through the seam touchdown. A one yard touchdown run for Jordan Canada. And now Brody McKnight on for the extra point to tie this game up. And we are tied at seven. This play was essentially the same running play they'd run the previous two times. The difference was number 17, Gerald Kemp. When he came in motion with the action that he could possibly be the jet sweep guy or the pitch guy right here, it stretched out the gaps for Northern Iowa on defense, which was a great job by offensive coordinator Jonathan Smith to try and create a schematic advantage through motion and shift. The play didn't change. Oh, it was a terrific job of execution there. Good block up front. Danny Kissler, we've mentioned his name, matched up against 43. Ben Booth, the, the defensive tackle, who's penetrated an awful lot tonight. And don't forget, that drive was set up by the defense coming up with a stop, a three and out, after Northern Iowa was backed up at their own seven-yard line. Well, they're getting cranked up now. Nine plays, 39 yards. And a one-yard touchdown run by Jordan Canada. Keep in mind, I go back to the three and out that Montana's defense held, forced the punt, put their offense on a short field. It changes the complexion of your play calling, the self-esteem and morale of your team. 
such a huge game changer when field position comes into play. And a 39-yard drive that lasted four minutes and one second. Carlos Anderson, Jared Herring back deep with Brody McKnight on the kickoff here for Montana. And the student section is jumping. Short kick. Jared Herring takes it up by the 25. And Herring takes it up beyond the 35, up to the 36. A flag on the play. No flag on the play. You know what's happening out here for those folks at home. We have yellow shoes on a lot of these Northern Iowa players, and they look like flags. A good start in this one. Northern Iowa struck first. Montana answered. We're tied at seven at the end of one. So you see those yellow shoes, right? They've confused everybody. There was actually a flag on the play. So now it appears we have an untimed down. Then the teams will switch sides for the second quarter. Jared Herring in motion. And the handoff to Carlos Anderson. Bounced it to the outside. Anderson, good spin move. Brings it up to the 49-yard line. A pickup of eight. Kayla McSurdy makes the tackle. And what that also does is makes it very easy to switch sides. <laughs> That's the end of the first quarter. So there you go. That's, That's just the end of the first quarter. Flip now around, it's the guys. second quarter. Yeah. And we can start running time downs. <laughs> the first quarter. We saw Northern Iowa strike first. But I tell you, it's the fortitude, the mental fortitude of Northern Iowa. Uh, the way they've handled this environment early. We're, we're able to get a score early, quiet things down a little bit. And, and now Montana's settled down. They had the short field on their third series offensively, was able to capitalize. They've gotten a feel for each other, both of these teams. I would expect execution on behalf of both ball clubs to really start to heat up. Execution, yet both teams are kind of confused right now because there's a quarter change. They go to, to their benches, and then they're all of a sudden they're saying, wait, wait, no, no, go back in the field. We're ready to play. <laughs> Let's see if the chain gang can get it right too, because that could be the most confusing part of it. Well, I want the I think the officials as well as us up here in the booth would really like to see some white or black shoes <laughs> at Northern Iowa. It's Caleb McSurdy, the All-American. Already has three tackles on the night that gives him 120 on the year for Montana on defense. And that ball right now is not in the right location. Now they're <laughs> going to move it up. It should be the 48-yard line, or the 49-yard line, excuse me, of Northern Iowa. And now it's all set. I think Montana liked that initial spot. So second down and two coming up here for the Panthers of Northern Iowa. Coming with a record of 10 and 2, 7 and 1 in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Austin Wells, a tight end in motion. Handoff to Anderson. Anderson tries for the cutback lane, brings it up to midfield, picks up a yard. Jermaine Johnson with his first tackle of the ball game. Montana doing a good job of maintaining outside leverage, not allowing the play to turn the corner on them, forcing the ball back into the side where all their, their buddies are on defense, and then tackling well in the open field. Big third down and short here for Northern Iowa. They have to get to the 49 of Montana. Watch out for Rennie. It's the handoff to Anderson, and Anderson's not going to get it. Ben Hughes, the defensive tackle, able to trip up Carlos Anderson. Well, that's back-to-back -back three and outs now for Northern Iowa on offense. Montana getting into a rhythm on defense, stopping the run, tackling well in the open field. And now the Grizz is going to get the football back on offense. Hope he'll be able to capitalize on that rhythm they got going on their last scoring drive. Kyle Bernard on to punt. Javen Sembrano. It's a short punt. And that'll be downs. 
It should be down around the 25 yard line. Marked down. And one official has it down to 19, but it will be down at 25. The 2011 NCAA Division I Football Championship continues next weekend with semifinal games on December 16th and 17th. Both games will be on the ESPN networks. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. So it will be first and 10 from the 25 for Montana. Dan Moore in the backfield for the Grizzlies. And off to Moore. Moore lowers that shoulder. And he brings it up just shy of the 35. A nine yard pickup. Wilmot Wellington with a tackle. Dan Moore is the bull in the China shop. He's the guy that's going to lower his shoulder, push the pile. A really big physical runner at 235 pounds, where Peter Wynn, Jordan Canada, about 5'8, 5'9, 175 pounds. Second and one. Give it back to Moore. Moore gets the first down and Moore. Up to the 45 yard line. I said a series ago that I was impressed with Jonathan Smith's ability to stick with the run game even when things weren't going well. And now that faith he's put in the offensive line in the run game is starting to pay off. Another first down by Moore, 10 yard run. And it's Moore again able to avoid the pressure and dance up beyond midfield of the 49 of Northern Iowa. LJ Fort with his fifth tackle and a flag comes flying in. Carver call for the personal foul. And that's just a stupid play on behalf of Carver versus number four, Varmasoni. Very disappointing. And now you back your offense up another 15 yards. Absolutely unnecessary. You're starting to generate rhythm. You're taking over the game. Coach Robin Flugrad all over him and has every right to be. So the ball is put back at the 36 yard line. Second down and 19. Johnson. Out of the pocket on the run. And he's dragged out of bounds. Austin Hayden felt able to chase down Jordan Johnson. A loss of one on the play. So now third and 20 coming up. Just the, the complexion of your offense, your team, your momentum absolutely deflates when you have a penalty like that. And now you're sitting here at third and 20. Jordan Canada in the backfield now. Johnson again back to pass, has time, taking a chance, completes the pass to Sam Gratton for the first down. A 26 yard completion. Well, this is an extremely well thrown football by Jordan Johnson. It's a deep corner route to number eight, Sam Gratton. Takes a little time to develop. No panic in the pocket from Johnson. He throws a strike to the sideline. Good catch, secures the football, and what a huge conversion on third and 20. And now an empty backfield on first down. Johnson again on the run. He's going to run for it. And Johnson gets towards the sideline, forced out of bounds by Varma Sony. Another big gain, this time a 19-yard run by Jordan Johnson. We talked earlier, Jordan Johnson, number 10 right there, not very tall. He's about 5'11", 6 feet. And if he can't see, this is what he's going to do. And then it's about making wise decisions. If you're on defense at Northern Iowa, do you come up and, and play the run, or do you allow your 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 man-to-man -man coverage to be compromised and a wide open guy comes open in the passing game. He's putting a lot of strain on Northern Iowa's defense right now. Dan Moore in the backfield on first and 10. Take the handoff. Johnson again pressured. Escapes the pressure once now twice. And he alertly throws it out for the flag comes flying in. 
He was looking for Antoine Mutra down the sideline. Head coach Mark Farley, Northern Iowa looking on as his football team gave up a third and 20, a scramble, and now a penalty. Number four there, Varma Sony, the 5'9, 165 pound junior out of Minnesota, called with a defensive hold. So now first and goal from the 10 here for Montana. The handoff is to Moore. And Moore. Gets wrapped up at the six by L.J. Fort and Jordan Smith. A four-yard run there by Dan Moore. Second and goal coming up from the six-yard line for the Montana Grizzlies. You go back to that personal foul, knocked him back 15, and that big 26-yard completion on third and 20. Moore in Canada in the backfield now. Johnson. Keeping it, running, Johnson, touchdown! Jordan Johnson with a six yard touchdown run. Brody McKnight on for the extra point. Montana now leads 14 to seven. This is all Jordan Johnson, the quarterback at Montana. A designed quarterback keep possible option to the wide side. He tucks it under on his own, goes opposite in Montana in control, 14-7. Back here in Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula, Montana. The University of Montana leads Northern Iowa 14 to seven. Look at the difference, the first two drives, the last two drives, do you think they settled down a bit? Well, they've settled down and they've been resilient to not abandon the game plan, not go away from the run game just because they had a couple of difficult downs in their first two series. Brody McKnight on to kick off for Montana. Carlos Anderson and Jared Herring are back deep. Anderson backing up all the way back to his own two. Anderson, a good run back, takes it across the 30, up to the 32-yard line. Sean Murray with a special teams tackle. So the winner of this will take on the winner of Montana State against Sam Houston State, which could set up a potential yeah. huge matchup in the state of Montana if Montana goes on the win and Montana State upsets Sam Houston State. You talk about a big ticket in this state. It'll be right here in this stadium if that were to work out. You can catch the semifinals on the ESPN networks. David Johnson now in the backfield here for Northern Iowa on first down. Rennie pressured up the middle. He goes down. Rennie is sacked by J.P. Canangata. A loss of six. Well, Montana comes after him. And they do it with some line studs, some linebacker pressure. J.P. Canangata does a great job. 52, number 91, Bobby Alt. Really collapsed the pocket. Left no seam. For him to take off and run, Terrell Rennie was caged in. We have not seen Rennie run too much since the first couple of series. Jared Herring in motion. And a handoff to Johnson, got a hole, and Johnson breaks the tackle. Down the sideline, the freshman at the 30, switches hands, and he gets pushed out of bounds. Let's see where they mark him down. Looks like at the 10-yard line, Bo Tully able to chase him down. It's a 63-yard run. 
right up inside. Again, he's 6'3", 215 pounds, lowers his shoulder, protects the football, and then he's off to the races. Has the wherewithal to put the ball into his left hand, make sure he doesn't have a ball stripped out there, and the crowd goes silent. But now this offense going into the closed end zone of this stadium, and it's getting cranked up here. First and goal from the 10. Handoff is to Johnson, looking for somewhere to go. Spence forward, picks up a yard. I mean, look at this big hole in the line of scrimmage being played on that side, Montana's side of the football. And then it's all Johnson, power load in the shoulder, playing with a good pad level. Tremaine Johnson, number two, Mike McCord, number nine for Montana, both missed tackles within seven yards of the line of scrimmage. Second and goal from the nine. Rennie, he has an opening to run. He cuts it back and dives forward, marked down at the three-yard line. A six-yard run, Houston roots with a tackle. This team, Northern Iowa, number one in the nation in red zone efficiency. Ninety-five percent leads the football championship series. And now a timeout taken here by Northern Iowa. This is first charge in the first half. It is a 14-7 Montana lead over Northern Iowa. Let's check back in with Ryan Burr for Sports Center now. All right, here's your Sports Center right now. The Hornets have resumed trade talks for Chris Paul, opening up discussions with anyone who is interested. Quote, we're talking about everything. Everything is on the table, GM Dell Demps said today. Paul was at the training facility also this afternoon. Ben Roethlisberger, high ankle sprain, described as, quote, not good. Steelers will have to wait and see. Steelers next game next Monday night in San Francisco against the 49ers Sports Center on ESPN News, guys. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. And, Tom, you saw Ben Roethlisberger last night. You said if it was his other foot, he'd be even in more trouble. Yeah, he would have been in big trouble because he wouldn't have been able to plant off his back foot, create any type of power, and transfer his weight when delivering the football. Because it was on the front foot, it allowed him to offset his balance a little bit and still get some, some arm talent into some of those throws. What a, a courageous effort. Now, Mike Bresky is the defensive coordinator at Montana. He was worried about two things. Tyrell Rennie, the quarterback, number 10, escaping the pocket and making plays with his legs. And number seven, David Johnson. Those are the two things that have hurt Montana on defense on this drive. Empty backfield here on third and goal from the three. Rennie looking to pass. It's deflected, and it's incomplete. Well, he's looking for Terrell Sinkfield. So now fourth and goal from the three. And Mark Farley is going to elect to take the points with Tyler Siebertson on for the field goal. It's awfully tough down there when you get in close. I was a little surprised they didn't run it. Gets really loud. A 21-yard field goal attempt here for Siebertson. And he's had a great year. The great year continues. 14 to 10, Montana leading Northern Iowa with 8.22 to go here in the first half. Andrew Lutt, Robert Griffin the third, Tyron Matthew, and Trent Richardson. So, Tom Luganville, who is your pick for the Heisman Award this year? Trent Richardson's been my guy, but I got to be honest, I've been somewhat won over by Robert Griffin the third. I know this last performance versus Texas was one of the few that most of the nation actually all got to see on a day where nobody else was really playing, and he's special. And if he were to win it, it would go against all conventional theory of what it takes to win it. Javen Sembrano takes it at the 14. Sembrano up the middle. Sembrano still on his feet as he crosses midfield down the 46-yard line. Of Northern Iowa, a 40-yard return for Javen Sembrano. One of the things that makes this return so effective is Sembrano does not hesitate. He hits the crease, trusts the group in front of him. They set a nice wall, good wedge up front. Everybody's got a hat on a hat, but he didn't dance. 
and he hit the crease, picked one, and went. That's good effort and good confidence by Zambrano. Peter Wynn in the backfield. Good field position here for Montana. Play action. Johnson over the middle. The pass is incomplete, but a little bit behind Javen Zambrano. Jordan Johnson threw this football to the right guy. This was about ball placement. You see number 20, Wilmot Wellington. And Sambrano has him beat, and Sambrano probably should have caught that football. Was not ideal ball placement, but a catchable ball. Certainly one that should be caught by a player of his caliber. And he knows it. And Jordan Johnson knows he's got to place it in front of him. Second down and ten. Johnson swings it out. Complete to Gerald Kemp, but Kemp will be taken down for a loss of one. James Conley, who came in to Northern Iowa as a cornerback, last year played some defensive end, this year playing some linebacker. Now the last two drives for Montana, they had such success on first down running the football. Chose not to do that this time around, and now they're sitting here with a third and 11. Something they haven't been behind the chains with much the last two drives. They converted third and 20 last drive. Over the middle, and it's almost intercepted. Garrett Scott was right there. It looked like his own man ran into him and broke up the play. Well, each team now has had a dropped interception in this first half, and I think this ball was just forced. Jordan Johnson had too much confidence right here, threw it too far ahead of Greg Hardy, his quarterback, with number 15, Garrett Scott. Should have caught that football. Marmasoni back deep. Brody McKnight on to punt. Sony back at his own 16. Sony going back to play that ball. So just let it drop. Now he's going to get wrestled down at his own four yard line. A cardinal sin committed by Varma Sony. The tackle made by Matt Hermanson, the true freshman. Tom, you say it so many times. If it's over your head at the 10, let it go. Yeah, put your heels on the 10-yard line and stay there. Wait for Kit Fair catch. Let the ball go over your head. And not only did he field it in an area he shouldn't have done so, look at the manner in which he fields it. Catches it over his shoulder. That's dangerous. And now you've backed up your offense. Montana feeling good about having their defense on a long field. Coach Mark Farley obviously not too happy. Giving a life lesson right there. Carlos Anderson and David Johnson in the backfield here for Northern Iowa. And the handoff is to Anderson. Anderson's going nowhere. Bobby Alts, number 91, and Alex Bieneman, number 92, there for the stop. You go back to the last time Montana had Northern Iowa pinned back here. They forced a punt, had the short field, and that was the series of their first touchdown on offense. It's imperative. Let Northern Iowa get out of this hole and give themselves some breathing room and some field to work with. We haven't seen David Johnson make a catch out of the backfield yet. He is tied for the team lead in receptions. Second down and 10. Handoff to Anderson. And Anderson able to pick up a few yards. Alex Bieneman there for the tackle. Josh Collins and Jared Herring come back in. Two wide receivers here for Northern Iowa. And now Northern Iowa is playing at the end of the field where the student section for Montana is located. David Johnson in the backfield. Facing third and seven. Empty backfield now. Rennie. Quickly to Johnson, and a flag is thrown, incomplete pass. That goes against Misha Danilov, the right tackle. And Robin Flugrad talked about this, as well as his defensive coordinator, Mike Bresky. This crowd is responsible for so many five-yard penalties yes. deep in his zone at this stadium. They absolutely are. 
You get you a little jittery. Communication once again can get muddled. You cannot hear. Third and long. Rennie from his own end zone. Pressure. Escapes the pressure. And Rennie, able to avoid the safety, brings it up to the eight-yard line. Not only was he able to avoid the safety, but let's take a look at him running this back line and see if he stays on bound, in bounds. Wow. <laughs> hey, listen, the official head referee was right on it, right behind him. Great job officiating in the back end of the end zone. Kyle Bernard on to punt. A low punt. Zambrano fields it at midfield and gets tackled right away as he gets up to the 47-yard line. Good field position once again here for Montana. They lead Northern Iowa by four. 526 to go here in the second quarter. It's 14-10. Montana leading Northern Iowa. A great front on hand here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. The Montana Grizzlies located right here in Missoula. Enrollment over six over 15,600. Two national titles, 95 and 01. That 95 one kind of stings my broadcast partner here, Tom Luganville. Ouch. And at that time. They had to go to Marshall, which was another daunting environment to beat the Thundering Herd and did so. Jordan Johnson, the shotgun, hands off to Win. Win cuts it back. He's got the first down, still on his feet. Win down the sideline. Win all the way to the end zone. No, he's going to be marked down at the 10. They say he stepped out. The official is standing at the 10 yard line. What did I say last series about Montana's play selection on first down? Running the football when they got away from that, nowhere near the same level of, of success and got behind the chains instead of ahead of them. First and goal coming up from the 10. Let's see where he stepped out. Will Eilert, number 93, showing great effort there. Wow, for Northern Iowa. Dan Moore now in the backfield. Play clock down to seven. And a timeout will be taken here by Montana. Timeout, Montana, that's their first charge of the first half. It's a good job by the sideline. Now Coach Flugratz telling his quarterback, I know we've got to get that call moving, but you've got to be cognizant of where that play clock is at all times. Sideline actually had to come in and make that timeout. You do not want to take a penalty when you're putting yourself in scoring position. Peter Wynn had that big drive. Had that big run here on the first play. And let's see it again if he was, in fact, out of bounds. Does a great job. He breaks two tackles there. He's not a very big guy. Keeps those legs churning. Apparently he stepped out right there on the 10 yard line. The official to that sideline was all over it. Tough to tell with some players falling at the legs. Peter Wynn, number 28 there. Good job up front in the offensive line that time as well by the center, 68, Steven Saban. This is the third of six possessions for Montana to start in Northern Iowa territory. They only scored so far in one of those possessions, but here they have now a first and goal coming up from the 10. This play is under review. There has been a challenge. Now we got a score from 10 yards out. <laughs> uh, 
Four-point lead here for Montana. These lights have been brought in by Musco Lighting, hence that sign. <laughs> Peter Wynn in the backfield. Play action again. Johnson pressured, throws, and he nearly threw it right to the hands of Chris Jepson. The pressure applied by Will Eilert, number 93. There's Jordan Johnson again, a great play fake. Now, the only thing that prevents this from being, and that was quite the takedown right there by 93 Eilert, prevents this from being intentional grounding is big number 85, Cavario Middleton. Was in the same, I wouldn't even say vicinity, I'd call it a loose area code. And I think Montana might have gotten away with just a little one there. Great success so far here, red zone offense for Montana. Second down and 10. The handoff to win up the middle and win powers in for the touchdown. <laughs> Peter Wynn was marked down at the 10 when he thought he had a touchdown, so now he takes it in from the 10 for the touchdown. Brody McKnight on for the extra point. Twenty-one to ten, Northern Iowa now trails Montana. You take a look right here. That ball was thrown errantly in a dangerous area. Could have been an interception instead. The ensuing play. Peter Wynn capitalizing behind their big physical. An athletic offensive line for the Montana Grizzlies. And now the Grizz up 11, starting to take control of this football game, at least up front, kind of setting the tone. Steven Saban, Danny Kissler, as we've talked about. And the interior of that Montana offensive line, very impressive. Peter Wayne with all 47 yards on that drive. Again, as we take a look at the brackets here in the FCS quarterfinals. Northern Iowa and Montana, the winner of this will take on the winner of Montana State, Sam Houston State. That game tomorrow noon Eastern time on ESPN. The bottom half of that bracket, Maine against Georgia Southern and Lehigh against North Dakota State. Lehigh will be without their best player, their wide receiver, who was suspended by the NCAA. Jared Herring and Carlos Anderson are back deep for Northern Iowa with Gordy McKnight to kick off. Peter Wynn getting checked out on the sidelines. A low kick. Carlos Anderson takes it at the 10. Anderson trying to cut it back, brings it up to the 29-yard line. Adam Badger with a special teams tackle. Northern Iowa out of the Missouri Valley Football Conference, located in Cedar Falls, 13,000 students. They played in one national title game back in 2005. When they had come here in 2001, lost 38 to nothing. Coach Mark Farley, the head coach currently now, there he is on the sideline, remembers it well. He was the head man here. and. He, better than anybody, knew what this team was getting in here in for tonight, crowd-wise. Terrell Rennie taking a chance on first down, going down the sideline, and it's incomplete intended for Terrell Sinkfield. Houston roots there on the coverage. Well, they bring Tremaine Johnson on a quarter blitz from the boundary side, put Rennie under pressure. He throws the deep ball down to Terrell Sinkfield, almost makes a grab. On Houston Roots, number 20 is in good position. It's been tough to make that catch. Couldn't ask for the corner to be in a better, in a better spot. Second down and 10 from the 25-yard line. Montana showing blitz. Play clock down to three. Rennie swings it out to David Johnson. 
And Johnson will be marked out at the 32, a pickup of eight. Tremaine Johnson with a tackle. You know, we've talked so much about this crowd and how difficult it is to play here and the success that Montana as a program has had not only entirely but throughout the playoffs we'll see here in a minute staggering numbers here in Missoula third and two coming up Northern Iowa 0 for 5 tonight on third down conversions and now whistles and a timeout has been taken by Northern Iowa you talk about what this Montana team has done here at Washington Grizzly Stadium Let's take a look at these numbers here and, and just soak them in for a minute and why it's so intimidating for people and teams to come in here. 28 and six at home in postseason, but 18 and one in the month of December. And that bottom number right there, that's overall yeah. since 2008. And if you're wondering, overall, it's 170 and 21 in the history here. And 10 and 0 in the quarterfinals of the playoffs. Back here, 3.51 to go in this half, 21 to 10. Montana leads Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa facing a third and two from their own 33-yard line. David Johnson in the backfield, the freshman with Terrell Rennie. Rennie drops back. Throws to Johnson. Johnson picks up the first down as he gets wrestled down by Caleb McSurdy. This was a really good job by Northern Iowa to run the bunch formation. Three receivers to the field side in what you call a bunch. They're all bunched and clustered together. And if you get caught in man-to-man -man defense, you could get crossed up and you lose sight of who you're responsible for. That happened right there. They were able to leak out David Johnson into the flat and convert the down. That's the first third down conversion of the game for Northern Iowa. Rennie over the middle, throws behind his receiver, and it's an incomplete pass. Jared Herring tried to adjust to make the catch. Second and 10 coming up. Tyrell Rennie. He's got what he'd like right here. Jared Herring, he just throws the football behind him. And to be honest with you, had he thrown it in front of him, it might have been intercepted. Rennie throws, completes the pass to Jared Herring. Herring picks up eight, will set up third down and two for the second time on this drive. They converted on their last third and two. Out of the timeout, they went to David Johnson out of the backfield. The bunch set again, Justin. Rennie. Just throws it out of bounds. Fourth and two coming up here for Northern Iowa. We are here in Missoula, Montana for the FCS Championship quarterfinal between Northern Iowa and Montana at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Justin Kutcher alongside Tom Luganville. 21 to 10, Montana leads Northern Iowa after Northern Iowa struck first, led seven to nothing and silenced this crowd. Montana has answered back. Powell Bernard on to punt. Javen Sambrano back deep at his own 15-yard line. Sambrano comes up, takes at the 19. Sambrano cut back, has some blockers down the sideline. And Sambrano brings it up to the 49-yard line. A 30-yard return. The punter Kyle Bernard with the tackle. Once again, good field position here for Montana with 2.26 to go in the half. Jordan Canada in the backfield. Canada fumbles, picks it back up, gets the good hop, and gets forward to pick up three yards. Ben Boothby with his fifth tackle of the game. Woo!
Some coaches on Montana's sideline wiping their brow right now. This is a good feed of the football. He just drops the ball and puts it on the ground. Canada 26. Lucky to recover that football and then advance it and get four yards. Canada on the handoff. Breaks the tackle. Gets forward for the first down. Jordan Smith with his third stop of the game. A nine-yard run there by Canada. I've been very impressed with the leg power and the ability to break arm tackles by both of the undersized backs in this offense. Peter Wynn at 5'8", 180. Jordan Canada, 5'9", 170. Really the only big power back they have is Dan Moore. He's a completely different dimension. Now Gerald Kemp in the backfield. And they flip it. Here's the reverse. Sambrano. And Sambrano brings it up to the 30-yard line. A pickup of nine will set up second down and one. Coach Flugrad's trying to call a timeout, saying, hey, the official's not watching me. Had to run out to the other official. Timeout, Montana. 30, 30 second timeout. Second timeout Montana. used here by Montana. Stops the clock with 1.20 to go. And looking ahead to tomorrow, the matchups, Sam Houston State, their offense, kind of potent. There's something in the air there in Houston, huh? Yeah, absolutely. A really explosive football team. And that'll be a challenge for Montana State, as we talked about earlier with the bracket. Montana State can somehow get a win there. The Grizz of Montana get a win here. They play here, an in-state battle in the playoffs. And then Ryan Spadola, that is a huge, huge suspension coming this week as Lehigh prepares for North Dakota State. Georgia Southern most wins in the FCS these fans they have been talking about this game you know we talked with Robin Flugrad the head coach of Montana and he tries to tell us that this is the only show in town yeah. these guys are the essentially professional sports team in town you go to the mall they all get mom for autographs you look at the front page of the newspaper today it's talking about the lights being brought in for this game you go to the sports section it is all montana right. grizzly sports and you'd see the support obviously in the turnout here tonight temperature in the low 20s to put it nicely no precipitation though that's what they generally are getting this time of year second down and one jordan canada in the backfield play clock down to three Johnson has plenty of time. Throws wide open to the sideline. Complete to Mutra. And Mutra brings it inside the 10, down to the 8. A 22-yard completion to the transfer from UCLA. Yeah, the former Bruin has fit in well here. Big physical player. It's a good job by Jordan Johnson there to know what the defense was doing. Take what they give you. Throw the ball underneath. First and goal from the 8. Hand off to Canada. And Canada gets tackled by Ben Boothby. A three yard pickup. Second down and goal coming up from the five. Now, this is going to be about clock management for Montana here on offense. They're a no huddle team, calling everything at the line. Play clock is running down. Johnson. The shot to the end zone, caught, touchdown! Cavario Middleton with a five-yard touchdown reception. His third touchdown catch of the year. Big Cavario, we just mentioned the transfer from UCLA and Antron Motra. And Cavario Middleton, a highly touted player. One time was at the University of Washington. Brody McKnight's extra point is good. 28 to 10. Montana starting to pour it on here with 30 seconds to go in the first half. Montana did a good job right there schematically by taking the big Middleton at almost 6'6", 250, isolating him to the boundary one-on-one -on -one and just using that big body in wide catch radius on the underneath slant route. That's just a complete mismatch. Look at the athleticism versus 28 J.J. Swan. Swan's six foot 170. Middleton's mammoth. Just over 6'5", 250. One time, Cavario Middleton was a 
highly touted player out of the state of Washington, signed with Washington, was in the ESPN U150. Things didn't pan out there in Seattle and has found a home here with the Montana Grizzlies. Montana has outscored Northern Iowa 28 to 3 since that first touchdown by the Panthers. When it looked like Montana was the team that was flustered, they've settled down in a big, big way. Well, they settled down, and I, I attribute a lot of that to, again, the trust that the players have in the coaches and the coaches have in the players to stick to the plan, don't get flustered, don't hit the panic button. They could have easily abandoned the run game early when things weren't going well. They chose not to do it, and it's paying off. Rory McKnight on the kickoff again. Carlos Anderson takes it back at the six. Anderson looking for a hole. Anderson takes it across the 30. Will be marked down at the 32. Matt Hermanson with a second special teams tackle, a 27-yard return. And Jordan Johnson has led this team. Montana really done a lot with his legs. Oh, this is the dynamic he brings to the offense. If things aren't there, he can keep a play alive when things break down, get out of the pocket. Again, not very tall, so he likes to make sure he can see. And he's a pretty heady, savvy player when he knows that maybe things aren't just perfect. And he throws the strike underneath here to Mario Middleton to make it 28 to 10. But I've been very impressed with the savvy of Jordan Johnson. Understands the offense. has just made plays throughout the evening. Rennie, the quarterback draw. That's the first time we've really seen Rennie run the ball. He was down before the ball came loose. Alex Shaw with the tackle, his third of the night. We mentioned earlier in the second quarter that Mike Bresky, the defensive coordinator at Montana, was really concerned about two things. Containing Rennie, the quarterback, when he escapes the pocket, and then number seven, David Johnson. And outside of a play here or there, they've accomplished that on defense. 28 to 10, Montana will receive the second half kick. Both these teams are very good at making second half adjustments. Northern Iowa will have to make the bigger one. 28 to 10 at the half. Cutcher alongside Tom Luganville. And Tom, it looked like Northern Iowa may have weathered that storm at the beginning of the game, but that storm just kept back and kept fighting, and Montana's now up by 18. Well, they're up by 18, and it's really been a matter of field position. Montana on offense has started at least four series in plus territory against Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa hasn't been able to manufacture any big plays on offense, so there's no way for them to get back into this thing without big plays, because now the crowd's going to jump all over them, and that's got to be a concern for Mark Farley, the head coach at Northern Iowa. And this Montana team, they made some adjustments in that first half to kind of change things up against Northern Iowa as we look at the Home Depot coaching adjustments. Well, in the first half, Northern Iowa tried to get into some bunch looks where they cluster up the receivers and try and pick you off on defense with the hope you're in man-to-man -man defense. And you look at here, the structure, they were in man-to-man -man defense, so you freeze it up there and look at the cluster of defensive players that can't get to their responsibility. David Johnson leaks out into the flat, and they're trailing in late and convert on third down. Later on in the quarter, they try the bunch formation again. You see the route set right here. But this time, the adjustment by Montana on defense is to sit back in zone. So you see the routes, and we're going to stop it right here and look at the two defenders. They are not trailing in man-to-man -man coverage. They're passing off the crossing routes. So there's nowhere to go with the football for the quarterback and he has to eat it. He can't convert. Great job on the adjustment, and I would anticipate in the second half, you will see no more man-to-man -man coverage against the bunch set. Well, here in the second half, it will be Northern Iowa kicking off, Montana returning. 
Tyler Sievertson will kick off here for Northern Iowa. Javen Sembrano and Peter Wynn back deep. And a short kick. Wynn takes it from the 16. Wynn up across the 35, up to 37, a 21 yard return. These two teams are very good at making adjustments coming out of the locker room. As you take a look at the numbers, this is what they have done in the third quarter this year scoring-wise. You see Montana has put up a ton of points in the third quarter. Northern Iowa has been very stingy on defense. They're going to need to keep that up and then put some points on the board. No question. It comes down to big plays as we talked about at the half. They're going to have to come up with a way to make some. Johnson scrambles forward, dives across the 40, up to the 41, picks up three. They had a bit of a miscommunication there in terms of the offensive play, what they wanted to accomplish. Jordan Johnson got up there and didn't quite feel like it was the right set. Johnson, the handoff to Dan Moore. Moore barrels forward across midfield at the 48. James Conley with a tackle, an 11 yard run by Moore. And now they put the power back in to really start leaning on that Northern Iowa defense. Moore again, a 235 pounder, more of a fullback type build and mentality. He's a battering ram. Handoff again is to Moore. You just see him cut back, and as soon as he cuts it back, he just lowers that shoulder. This time picks up two. And I think this is a ploy by design to set the tempo here in the third quarter and let Northern, Il Northern Iowa, excuse me, on defense know. Hey, we're going to come right after you with a power run game. Kept this time by Johnson. Johnson gets hit right away by August Haydenfeld. Was not fooled on that one. A loss of two on the play. Number 56, August Haydenfeld did a great job with his hands and with his eyes. Keeping leverage, keeping the body away, and keeping his eyes in the backfield, shedding the, the block and going and making the tackle. Terrific job up front by Northern Iowa. A big third down here for Northern Iowa. They need to stop. Gerald Kemp in motion. Johnson back to pass. Throws towards the sideline. And the pass is complete to Antoine Mutra for the first down. Antoine Mutra is tight roping the sideline right here. Does a good job of pushing off the defender with a vertical stretch. And then great focus with his hands away from his body on the low ball and maintaining one foot inbound. Terrific job by Mutra number three. First and ten from the 37. Hand off to Moore up the middle, and Moore is met right away. Picks up a yard. Jordan Gakey, middle linebacker there with his second tackle here in the third quarter. See how cold it is out there right now. Temperatures really dropped from the first half to the second. Your Coles? I'm not cold, <laughs> but I can remember at one time being cold on this field. Second down and nine. Play action. Johnson hit as he throws, and he completes the pass over the middle, and a flag comes flying in. The pass complete to Javen Sembrano. 28-yard completion. This is a really well-thrown football and an outstanding job of focus, and more importantly, by Javen Sambrano, number 16, the ability to put his hands away from his frame. To pluck the ball away from the defender. Look at his arms extend away from his frame. He takes a shot. That was a terrific job of focus, strong hands. Jordan Johnson right there gets elevated by Ben Booth, be number 43, who we've mentioned quite a few times tonight. Johnson. Scrambling, throws, end zone, touchdown, Sam Gratton. Eight yard touchdown completion to Gratton. Just his second touchdown of the year. And now 
down. Brody McKnight on for the extra point. 35 to 10. And now whistles. And the officials are coming in. Flag down on the field. The previous play of a touchdown is under further review. So the kick did not get off in time. Number eight, Sam Gratt is going to be coming along the back end of the end zone. Jordy Johnson, the quarterback, is going to wait to the last second. And from that view right there, and this is going to be a better view. One foot, knee. Knees down. And at that point, the official right in front of it feels he secured the football. There will not be enough indisputable video evidence to overrule this call on the field, which was a touchdown. Official all over it there on the sideline. Well, if it holds up, it would be an eight-play drive capped off by an eight-yard touchdown pass to number eight, Sam Gratton. Our referee is Rodney Burnett. We'll take one more look at this. Sam Gratton, the junior from Billings, Montana. It's a really well-thrown football into a tight, confined space. Two Northern Iowa players trailing Gratton. See the that's question. right there. Does he have possession? But that's the question. Now the official. After further review, the touchdown stands. Yeah. The official who made the call was standing directly in front of it from the stomach viewpoint of Gratton. Felt he had possession, and again, no evidence there to state otherwise. It's indisputable. So Brody McKnight once again will try to convert the extra point. And he does again. 35 to 10. Montana strikes first here in the third quarter. Opening up a wide margin. An eight-yard touchdown pass from Johnson to Gratton. 35 to 10. Back here in balmy Missoula, Montana, where it's 35 to 10, Montana leading Northern Iowa for the right to go on to the semifinals. Watch out for those burners, Tom Luganville. I know you've got a story about that one from playing right here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Look at this, the temperature has dipped now to 17 degrees, but there's no snow, full moon. It's a great night. Some of these fans don't even have shirts on. I know it. I thought about going shirtless. With a jacket or no jacket? Had better judgment. <laughs> McKnight kicking off. Carlos Anderson takes it at the eight. Anderson brings it across, marked down at the 21 yard line. Tom, you played your final collegiate football game here. Yep. You wore a shirt, <laughs> but it didn't really matter, did it? No, it didn't matter. It's so cold, and the way the stadium is set up and the field is set, it's dropped down about eight feet, almost like a pit. And the crowd, you look at the sideline, the crowd is right on top of you. The players, you're sitting on the bench, and the, and the fans can reach down and grab you. And the noise, the weather, the travel to get here, it is the ultimate home field advantage. And after this play, I'll tell you a story about those sideline heaters. On first down, Rennie throws to Terrell Sinkfield, and Sinkfield spun forward up to the 27-yard line. Picks up five, tackled by Tremaine Johnson. Okay, go on. So those little protein, the propane heaters that are on the sideline and they're generating that orange and red heat, we had a backup quarterback that was quite cold that day and was standing too close to it and 
lit himself right, right there, lit himself right on fire. His socks and his pants went up in flames right, right there on the sideline. Second down and four. Handoff to Anderson. And Anderson gets tackled after a pickup of two by Mike McCord. And the final score of that game, Eastern Kentucky 0, Montana 48. 48, and the Grizzlies went on to win the national championship behind quarterback Dave Dickinson. Had a long time, very successful career in the Canadian football team. They were a loaded ball club, similar to the one we're seeing here tonight. David Johnson in the backfield on third down and two. Plenty of time on the play clock. Rennie running the option. Rennie keeps it, and he gets wrestled to the ground by J.P. Kanangana. A loss of three. It was a great pursuit on Tyrell Rennie and puts Rennie in a position where he doesn't feel he can make this pitch because of the relationship between him and number seven, David Johnson. By that time, J.P. Kanangana is all over Rennie. And fourth down is upon them. Kyle Bernard on to punt. Javen Sembrano back to receive, standing at his 35. And they nearly got a hand on that one. Sembrano takes it at the 30. And he goes backwards, marked down at the 28. 35 to 10, Montana with the ball. They have a big lead in this one. Last week, Montana took on Central Arkansas, and they put it to Central Arkansas. Jay Van Sambrano, an eight-yard touchdown reception. Jordan Canada ran it in from 11. Sambrano again, 22-yard touchdown catch. Then Canada again, a 12-yard touchdown run, 41 to 14. They would knock out Central Arkansas, and now they lead 35 to 20. So. This Montana team is looking for their fifth straight win by 25 yep. or more points. Jordan Johnson on first down. Plenty of time again. The deep corner route. It is hauled in by Mutra again. 23-yard completion. When he was wide open along the near sideline here. Well thrown ball to the UCLA transfer. Antoine Moutra, number three right there. Big physical receiver. It's been a nice compliment to the program. And off to Canada. And Canada gets tackled by Jordan Geeky. This is the second time we've seen Moutra extend away from his frame and then make sure he secures his footwork along the sideline. Did it on the opposite sideline of the previous drive. Very impressive focus and concentration from the senior out of Carson, California. Second down and nine. And off once again to Canada. And Canada gets tackled by LJ Fort, the nation's leading tackler. A three yard pickup by Canada. Two All American linebackers in this game alone at the FCS level. And LJ Fort, as we just mentioned, and McSurdy, Caleb McSurdy from Montana, who they nicknamed Dirt. Not dirty, just dirt. <laughs> They're down and six coming up. Johnson back to pass. Again with plenty of time. Throws down the sideline. Nearly picked off by Varma Sony. That's the second ball that Northern Iowa has had a chance and a very good chance for an interception. And you've got to make that play, especially in the position you're in as a football team right now. You've elevated. Boy, look at him get off the ground. Versus Javen Sambrano, number 16. This ball is just underthrown, but Varma Sony, number four, has got to make that grab, but it fortunately at least forcing a punt. And you and I, a team that has 18 interceptions on the year compared to just three that they've thrown. McKnight to punt. Keeps it low. And it takes a great Montana roll all the way to the five yard line. It could have gone even further. Donnie Lasowski downs it at the five yard line. We've got more FCS quarterfinal action tomorrow on the ESPN networks. Montana State takes on Sam Houston State, the number one seed in this tournament. That is at noon Eastern time.
Maine against Georgia Southern, 2 Eastern on ESPN3. And Lehigh visits North Dakota State, 4 Eastern, that game also on ESPN3. All right, so here comes Northern Iowa. They've got to do something offensively on this drive. There's 8.33 to go in this third quarter. They're running out of time. They're running out of time. And they're backed up, and it's been a game of field position in Montana's favor. On first down, Rennie comes to the sideline, completes to Herring, and Herring picks up the first down up to the 17-yard line, a pickup of 12. Very, very good decision by quarterback Tyrell Rennie. He wanted number two, two Terrell Sinkfield on the corner, but would have had to force the ball into a crowd. Instead, he comes underneath and does the smart thing with the football. He's got plenty of time here. He gets rid of the ball and gets him out of a bit of a hole, at least a little breathing room. Play action. Low throw incomplete. Was looking for Darian Howard as tight end. Again, the Montana Grizzlies have been virtually unbeatable here at home playoff games in the month of December. And keep in mind, as the calendar goes, the bigger the game, the more they host, the later it gets, the more of an advantage it is. The quarterfinals here tonight. If they win tonight, that means it makes them 11 and 0 in the quarterfinals of the FCS playoffs. Rennie back to pass, steps up. This is where he's dangerous. Good job containing by Montana. John Harris, number 96, there with a stop along with Ryan Featherston. And we mentioned coming out of the first half and the ability or inability to manufacture big plays for Northern Iowa on offense. And when you know that you're behind and you've got to throw the football, you start to press and force the ball a little bit. They've got to be very careful backed up here. One of eight on third down tonight is Northern Iowa. The Panthers facing a third and nine. Picking up the blitz. Rennie. Intercepted Jermaine Johnson. His second interception in as many games and his 15th in his career. Tyrell Rennie ends up getting hit right as he throws this football and it just takes the air out of the ball. It takes any power and velocity he had on the throw, makes the ball tail off. Brian Waldhauser, number 50, clobbers him. Right as the ball is getting let go and Tremaine Johnson the interception machine the All-American for Montana hauls another one in on first down the handoff to win the flea flicker back to Johnson and Johnson now will run for it a ton of room Johnson with a stiff arm there is a flag though in the backfield he's tackled by Varma Sony a 12-yard run. Jordan Johnson not even sliding. He's saying, uh-uh, let's get some contact here. <laughs> well, we're going to have a, a, a foul behind the line of scrimmage, and I think along the sideline here, not necessarily a, a personal foul, but maybe a horse collar in terms of how he got pulled back from the, the cuff of his collar on the back of his pads. I think that's what Mark Farley there, the head coach at Northern Iowa, is trying to find out. What did you call on the sideline here? Because it was a late flag. Rodney Burnett and his crew talking it over. There are two fouls on the play. Shot blocked by the offense, number 68. That penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. After the play, personal foul, late hit on the defense. That penalty is 15 yards from the dead ball spot. First down. 68, Steven Saban, the center, who's had a really good night. I'm not sure what they called up front there. Very interesting. I, I did not see a chop block up front. And they're going to say a late hit took place here. 
I don't know where the late hit is. I'm wondering where either of these two penalties are. I can maybe see a horse collar right there by grabbing on the back of the shoulder pad. I don't see the chop block, nor was there a late hit along that sideline. So it negated both. We're back to where we just were. We certainly are. The handoff is to win. Break some tackles. And win up to the 43-yard line. A nine-yard run. Darren Branch with a tackle. So that was, I didn't see one. I didn't see one. Let's throw a flag. Neutralize. Let's get back to square one. <laughs> Second down and one coming up here for the Grizzlies of Montana. Win hit in the backfield, held on to. Nice job by LJ Ford. A loss of one on the play. Well, it would be big if the Panthers of Northern Iowa could pull off a stop here, force a punt. Gerald Kemp in for the Wildcat. Kemp up the middle. He doesn't get there. He stopped Darren Branch again. So here is that stop that this team needed. Fourth down, and these fans, you almost get the sense they want them to go for it here. Well, they do want them to go for it. You see Coach Bluegrad right there, really upset with their inability to convert right there because I think he looked at that as a nail in the coffin type drive if they could get a touchdown there. Now having to punt the football away. Brody McKnight will punt. Barmasoni back to receive. Low snap. Again, it takes that Montana bounce all the way down <laughs> to the one. This guy is a magician. Donnie Lasowski again, but Brody McKnight. Fantastic placement and then gets the bounce. Danny Lasowski. McKnight fired up. McKnight's been getting in the weight room a little bit. Transfer from Purdue, first round pick in the CFL draft. That's right. Punters may want to watch him and emulate that style, that rugby style, because it's been effective. So now Northern Iowa backed up at their own one. Rennie up the middle just trying to get some breathing room. Picks up a couple of yards. It makes such a difference, the crowd noise here. Not only the, the mountain behind the stadium that really captures the sound and reverberates it back and forth, but the fact that the field is dropped down in a pit-style setting, and those stands come right up onto you. You can't escape it. The fans are right on top of you at all times. David Johnson in the backfield on second and seven. Rennie keeps it. Falls forward. Picks up a few more yards. John Harris with the tackle. Now you're looking at a, at a third and five here coming up. You know from the really the third offensive series of the game for Northern Iowa from that point thereafter they've been backed up they have not had quality offensive field position the entire game we'll call third down and four Rennie pressure coming swings it out completes the pass to Josh Collins and Collins gets the first down J.P. Kenangata with a tackle, an eight-yard completion to Collins. If J.P. Kenangata could have seen that football, he would have stepped right in front of it and intercepted it. He caught the ball laid out of the corner of his eye and was caught out of position with it, ended up having to make the tackle. Had he looked and located the ball, he might have had one right in his mitts. First and ten here for Northern Iowa. Johnson splits out. Rennie hit, wrapped up and sent to the ground. J.P. Kangana, the first to make contact. A loss of six. Now they wanted to pump that wide flare route out to the left side here 
of Rennie to number seven, David Johnson, and throw the ball downfield. By that time, the pocket was collapsed. J.P. Cannon got that. Bobby Alt, 91. We've mentioned those two names quite a few times here tonight, and now the crowd's really getting rolling. Second and long, Carlos Anderson is in. Listen to the crowd. Hand off to Anderson. Anderson, a little shake and bake. Anderson Gets up to the 20. Matt Hermanson brings him down to pick up a 10 yards. Very well executed up front by Northern Iowa here. And now put themselves in a very manageable third down situation as opposed to being really backed up with an injured Montana player, Tremaine Johnson, number two. They can't afford to not have him be in the lineup. He's an All-American corner, 6'3", 210. Two-time All-American. His coach calls him part of the All-Bus team, but he can actually play. Try. Yeah, he said, you want him getting off the bus first. Only he doesn't just look the part. He can play it as well. Let's take a look if we see what happened to Tremaine Johnson. He's going to come off the edge in a corner blitz. And I think he gets dinged there with a little helmet to helmet. Big offensive tackle, a big Tim Sauer, number 78, pulls around and they get dinged a little bit. Good to see him walking off. 2.48 to go here in the third quarter. Montana up 35 to 10, the 35 points, the most points that Northern Iowa has surrendered on the season. Jermaine Johnson, we talk about him being an All-American. 15 career interceptions. Now there's one here tonight. First team All-American this year. He's a two-time All-American over the course of his career. Rennie over the middle, completes to Jared Herring, and Herring picks up the first down. Really good job finding the open target in zone defense underneath by Rennie and just taking what the defense gives him. Slowly moving the chains. Can Northern Iowa afford to go into the huddle? Do they have to go into a hurry up offense trailing by this much with this little time left? If they can't start to manufacture big chunks of yardage in single plays, no, they're not going to be able to afford to, to huddle for much longer. Rennie drops back. Taking the shot down the field. Herring. And it's broken up beautifully by Donnie Lasowski. If Jared Herring, who was streaking down the field, could have had the ball thrown to him a little bit earlier by Tyrell Rennie, the quarterback. Donnie Lasowski, number five, is matched up. Remember, he's in the game for the injured corner, Tremaine Johnson, the All-American. But he recovers because this ball hangs in the air for quite some time. Does a great job with the left arm bar and then with the right arm bar and swiping over with the left. Excellent execution. Second and ten. Force out of the pocket. Rennie will run. Rennie picks up the first down. Up across the 40, up to the 42. That's the risk you run when you decide to go cover zero, which means you got no safety help in the back end. You're man to man and you're bringing the kitchen sink. There's going to be nobody in the middle of the field left to account for the quarterback. Rennie does a great job of eluding the pressure, tucking the football, getting what he can and converting. First time we've really seen him be able to do that. Yep. The option, it's kept by Rennie, nowhere to go. He's going to lose a yard. Let's check back in with Ryan Burr for Sports Center right now. All right, Justin, the Hornets have resumed trade talks for Chris Paul, opening up discussions with, quote, anyone who is interested. And GM Del Dem saying everything is on the table. Paul was working out in his Hornets practice uniform today. Ben Roethlisberger, heroic effort last night to beat the Browns. High ankle sprain. Steelers say, quote, not good. They don't play for 10 more days against the 49ers on Monday Night Football. Sports Center currently on ESPN News, guys. Second down 11. Rennie trying to get to the outside. Cuts it back, dives forward, and is marked down at the 48 yard line of Montana. Ryan Waldhauser and Houston Roots bring him down, a pickup of 10. And what do you know, but Northern Iowa is finally back into 
plus field position. And plus field position, and because of this guy right here, Tyrell Rennie, and his ability to improvise, keep plays alive, his legs are the most damaging thing to this Montana defense. And that was what Mike Bresky, the defensive quarterback, corner, uh, excuse me, coordinator, was worried about the most. Third and one. Rennie will run for it. He's got it again. And he gets hit hard by Matt Hermanson. The freshman now has six tackles. He's been impressive out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. A nine yard pickup by Terrell Rennie. Matt Hermanson just frames up Rennie along the sideline right there. That's fantastic work. Wrapping the arms, clubbing up, bow in the neck. Fundamental. And they will not get the playoff in time. So this third quarter will come to an end. These Montana fans are on their feet. They were silenced for about five minutes. And they're making the noise right now. Montana up 35 to 10. The fourth quarter is coming up here in the FCS quarterfinals. They're playing the Rocky music here at Washington Grizzly Stadium as Montana leads 35 to 10. The big quarter, that second quarter when they outscored Northern Iowa, 21 to three. Everybody is still here in the building. It's kept by Rennie. And Rennie pitches at the last second. And they're gonna say his knee was down. He tried getting the pitch off to Jared Herring, but J.P. Canangata was able to trip him up from behind. Well, we're going to take another look at this, but regardless, what a terrific individual effort on behalf of Rennie. J.P. Canangata. And his knee is down. That's a very good call. This has been a very clean and on top of things officiating crew here tonight. Second down and 10. Rennie. Escapes once, not going to escape twice. John Harris there for the sack. A loss of seven. This was exactly what Mike Bresky, the defensive coordinator's plan was for Montana. Pressure him, come after them, see what he does under duress. Tyrell Rennie at times has been able to elude it. For the most part tonight, it's been too much. Montana's brought too many guys. Northern Iowa doesn't have enough to block. And they're overloaded. You can see Terrell Rennie's banged up. He's hobbling there in the backfield. The backup quarterback is Jared Lanford. And now a timeout is being called here from the Northern Iowa sideline, trying to give Terrell Rennie some more time timeout, to recover. 35 to 10, the, the first charge timeout of the second half for the Northern Iowa Panthers. A new quarterback is in here for Northern Iowa, Jared Lampert, the freshman who was the newcomer of the week in the Missouri Valley Football Conference when he started against Youngstown State. He's in his first plays a third and 17. Play action. Lampert taking the chance down the sideline, and it's just short Terrell Sinkfield. Houston Roots there on the coverage. That would have been a heck of a first play for Jared Lanford. Yeah, he actually throwing that football behind was a great thought, but you got to throw it behind into the outside. He throws it behind into the inside, which would be dangerous. Intended for number two, Terrell Sinkfield. Kyle Bernard on to punt. David Sambrano back deep. Good high punt, fair catch, made at the nine-yard line. 13-31 to go here in the fourth. The Montana faithful are liking this one. They lead 35 to 10. The NCAA Football Championship is presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Looking at this game summary, Jordan Johnson, Efficient in the air and on the grounds. Jordan Johnson 
in at quarterback. On first down. The handoff is to Peter Wynn. Gets tackled by LJ Fort. You just saw the quarterback for Northern Iowa, Terrell Rennie, getting his thumb taped up on the sideline. A three yard pickup for Wynn. And what we've seen from this Montana offense is they can take time off the clock. And right now, time is their friend. Aside from the first two series, they've really been able to sustain drives the entire rest of the game. And you can see Johnson just waiting and having that play clock wind down. The handoff to Dan Moore. And Moore, he's a little bit more nimble than you would think as a late flag comes in. He is nimble. He's very fleet of foot, but he gives a different dimension than their other guys because he's such a physical runner and really a battering ram. It's going to be holding against Montana. And we've talked so much about the importance of field position tonight and how it's played into. Blocking the back against the offense, number eight. Penalties have to miss to the goal. Second down. How it's played into Montana's favor, but not here on this series at Sam Gratton, who caught the touchdown in the first series of the third quarter. Call with the illegal block in the back. You can see the big difference. That's the tail of the tape right there. I mean, that's the defining game changer. Second down and 15 coming up here for Montana. Off to Moore gets stuffed right away by Ben Boothby, who now has seven tackles, two for a loss. The loss of two, and a flag comes in late again. on whether or not a Montana receiver had come inside and blocked a defenseless player below the waist which is illegal you're not allowed to do that from a inside out position so third down and 16 coming up here for Montana if you're in Northern Iowa you have got to make the stop Johnson forced out of the pocket gets a good block Johnson picks up the first down a 20 yard run Dan Moore is the one who got the block to free him up like a bowling ball to the bowling pin watch Dan Moore 35 when he recognizes the elusive Jordan Johnson take off and run Bing! knocks him right down Johnson does the rest he's done so much with his legs when the initial play has broken down to move the chains for this offense. Now rewarding Moore with a carry. Moore with that second effort stays on his feet. He is an impressive runner. Dan Moore, 5'11", 235 pounds. Looks like he's going to be tackled for a loss, picks up eight. I mean, it's like a dump truck between the tackles. I mean, everything is a low shoulder, legs churning, lower body strength to push the pile. He's a load. It's kept by Johnson. And Jordan Johnson picks up another first down. Garrett Scott with his fifth tackle of the night, a 14-yard run by Johnson and stays in bounds. You know, you give such a heavy dose of Dan Moore that you can't help but flow to him. Now all of a sudden, Jordan Johnson's off to the races to the backside. Jordan Johnson, 10 carries, 86 yards on the night. Play action, Johnson over the middle, wide open, Sam Gratton 
and Gratton gets up, marked down at the 25-yard line. James Conley with a tackle after a pickup of 31. All those runs set up the play action. Montana's got Northern Iowa right where they want them. Run, 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 get gashed. You start crowding the line of scrimmage with a lot of purple pants there. And then Montana does a great job with the play pass coming across the middle of the field to Gatton number eight. Play action again. Johnson over the middle to Gratton again who makes the catch and goes in for the touchdown. There is a flag on the play. Boy, and this throw looked dangerous when it left his hand as number 20, Wilmot Wellington, comes across late. And I really felt he was... Really thought he had an opportunity to not only bat the ball down, but potentially intercept it. And Bratton on back-to-back -back plays, the same route, the seam route from the field side, the wide side of the field down the middle. Jordan Johnson on fire here at home tonight in the quarterfinals of the football championship subdivision playoffs. And Brody McKnight, the extra point is no good. It really doesn't matter all that much because Jordan Johnson teaming up with Sam Gratton for a 25-yard touchdown completion. And it's now a 41 to 10 ball game. A 31 point lead for Montana over Northern Iowa and Tom Luganville. You said this at the beginning of the broadcast. These fans do not leave this stadium. They are dancing. They are playing scenes from Animal House. The fans absolutely love it and they're not even cold. Look at this, it is Animal House. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Look at this. You'd think the game was 14 to 14 in the first quarter. The student section, again, if you're joining us late, I love this. There are no bleachers, there are no seats in the student section. The reason why is they have always stood during games, they jump up and down, they would break the seats, they break the bleachers, so they said, ah, forget it, we'll leave them, and they could stand on some cements. The temperature just a little while ago was 17 degrees. Nick Knight to kick off. Herring from his own three. Gets across the 20 up to the 22 yard line. Well, tomorrow night, a new name will be forever linked to college football's highest honor. The Heisman Trophy presentation by Nissan. Tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, Monty Ball, Robert Griffin III, our Andrew Luck, Tyron Matthew, and Trent Richardson. You know, Justin, I mentioned earlier about Robert Griffin III to be able to be in position to possibly possibly win that on a three-loss team, a team that's you know, not contention for a championship. That is rare. Terrell Rennie is back in at quarterback here for Northern Iowa. Keeps it, wraps up and gets hit hard. A loss of one, Alex Shaw and Brian Waldhauser combined for the tackle. Well, this defensive front seven for Mike Bresky and the Grizzlies is really getting cranked up here in the second half. They've got the crowd behind them and they're dominating the line of scrimmage up front right now. With this 41 to 10 lead and about 10 minutes to go in this fourth quarter, let's look ahead for Montana. They play the winner of Montana State, Sam Houston State, that game tomorrow on ESPN at noon Eastern time. If somehow Montana State can pull off the upset, you will have Montana against Montana State, and now Rennie gets drilled for the sack. Alex Shaw, the first one there. A loss of 10. Can you imagine a playoff game here in Montana, in Missoula, between those two schools? It would be out of sight. And again, look at the line games up front with the tackles and the linebackers creating all kinds of problems, confusion. 
as my colleague at ESPN, Dan Hawkins, always tells me, a conflict of assignment. <laughs> you create a conflict of assignment in the offensive line, a free guy comes loose. Third down and 20. Rennie going down the sideline, just throws it up. Intercepted by Donnie Lasowski. Lasowski going the other way for the touchdown. Thirty-five yard interception return by Donnie Lasowski for the touchdown, and Rennie is hobbling off the field. And the extra point is good. Well, for three consecutive downs, Montana's really turned up the heat. Lots of games up front. Linebacker dogs and blitzes. And you see the pressure. And that ball, I think, actually got tipped by Big 92. Alex Bieneman. And the ball goes right up in the air. Bobby Alt, 91, coming in late. Donnie Lasowski, now keep in mind, again, he came in the ball game for Tremaine Johnson, number two. And Rennie is down. And it's not good for the Panthers right now. And this is a guy, Terrell Rennie, who has been through so much this year. Before the first practice of the season, his brother was shot and killed in Atlanta. Yep. He found out about it, went back home to the funeral, played in the game at Iowa State. His mother came to see him play for the first time in his college career. And he said he just felt he owed it to his team to come out there and play because they supported him like they were his family in Iowa. He's been a leader on this team. You saw him go out with an injury. He came back here. He's giving it his all despite being down now 48 to 10. And Northern Iowa almost beat Iowa State that day. Lost 20 to 19 and a real close one down to the edge. And you mentioned looking ahead, if Montana State were to beat Sam Houston State tomorrow, they would meet up with Montana here next weekend. And keep in mind, Montana beat Montana State on the road the last game of the year to win the Big Sky Conference. Carlos Sanderson on the return, gets up to the 31-yard line. We talk about the student section, or we've talked about it a whole lot prior to the game. This was 90 minutes before a kickoff. You see 4.30 Mountain Time. The race is on. The lift tickets are on the jackets. The shirts are still on. <laughs> no seats. Just running down to get the best seats in the house. And they have been standing up the entire time. They have no other choice. And they have been loud ever since they scored their own first touchdown. Jared Lampers back in at quarterback. And the handoff to David Johnson. And Johnson gets up the 36-yard line, picks up five. And when you're looking at who's in right now for Northern Iowa, and Jared Lamper and David Johnson, these are two freshmen. So the future is bright here for Northern Iowa. There's no question about it. Mark Farley's got himself a really good football team. As we talked about in the open of this broadcast, you run into a buzzsaw when you come into this building. And the later into the season it gets, the colder it gets, the more hostile it becomes. And if you're not prepared for it, and you can't simulate it. You know, there's no way for Northern Illinois, uh, Iowa, excuse me, to prepare for this. 48 to 10. Mark Farley was looking for his 100th victory at Northern Iowa. They came in in his first year here to Missoula and lost 38 to nothing. He said, I know what this place is like. My players don't know what it's like. I'm trying to get them ready, but like you said, Tom, there's just nothing you can do. And we're going to have movement on the line. Misha Denilov. That's part of the techno for later <laughs> for all the, the dancing students. Again, tomorrow, lots more in the quarterfinals. Montana State against Sam Houston State at noon Eastern time. Then you can catch Maine and Georgia Southern, Lehigh and North Dakota State on ESPN3. 
Third down and 11. Lanford, good pass towards the sideline, completes to Jared Herring for the first down. You know, Mike Bresky, the defensive coordinator at Montana, he came right up and said, we're going to come after him. We're going to be who we are. We're going to do what we do. We're a pressured up the field type team. Well, my response to him was, are you pretty good on the perimeter? And he said, yes, we are. Because if you're not good to be able to hold up on an island, if you're going to take those chances with your pressure packages, you're going to give up a lot of big plays. And he was clearly right in his game plan. Wasn't afraid to take some chances. David Johnson splits out. Jared Lamper now running for it. And he's going to be pushed out for a loss by Bobby Alts. Well, everybody's covered downfield. Just got done talking about the importance of how strong you can be in the secondary. Disguise some things a little bit. Well, there's no there, there's nowhere to go with the football on a young freshman and Jared Lamper number 14. Tucks it, gets what he can. Bobby Alt, a junior college transfer out of California. His coach says he's been nothing but positive for this team. Lanford over the middle, intercepted. Brock Coyle. An 11 yard return. The quarterback pressure applied by Alex Bieneman and Brian Waldhauser. Another interception here thrown by Northern Iowa. They're usually the ones doing the intercepting. But this time it's the linebacker Brock Coyle stepping up. 48 to 10 Grizzlies. First down the handoff to Brett Kirshner. And Kirshner still on his feet, brings it across the 30 up to the 28. A 15 yard pickup as Wilmot Wellington gets his second tackle of the night. These fans are loving it. Little Neil Diamond in the background. Play it proudly. It is a great song. In any venue. <laughs> to Nate Montana, who was originally a walk-on at Notre Dame and then chose to go the junior college route at Pasadena City College, went back to Notre Dame, and now finds himself here in Montana. It's Kirshner again. Garrett Scott there with a the tackle after a pickup of three. Five quarter to go here in the fourth quarter. 48 to 10, Montana leading Northern Iowa. And it was Northern Iowa that struck first and completely silenced this crowd. And it looked like all of a sudden, you know what? We may have something very interesting on our hands. And then Montana answered. They stuck with that running game like you talked about. And they never looked back. They angered a sleepy grizzly bear. And off to Lance Carl. What's the saying? If you if the grizzly if you see the grizzly bear, it's too late. <laughs> right. These guys. Th this is uh, such an advantage for for the FCS level, uh, whether it's from a venue standpoint, a crowd support standpoint. You know, getting Missoula, getting to Missoula is not necessarily easy to do. Coach Flugrad compared it to Austin Stadium yep. at the University of Oregon in Eugene and, and he said I mean when you think about it Austin Stadium's not a big stadium nope. but it's very loud sunken down a little pit Eugene's not easy to get to <laughs> third and four it's Lance Carl again you played at the FCS level you played at the FBS level with Georgia Tech. Was there a venue that you played well at Georgia Tech that was as difficult as this venue? Clemson. Clemson is a very difficult place to play. They're right on top of you uh, from a stadium standpoint. Great fan base, extremely loud. I think it's probably the most difficult place to play in the ACC. Uh, this is, and I agree with Coach Bluegrad, this is like a mini Oregon. And as we've talked about tonight, here we sit at 48 to 10, and, and we've got a full house. 
Uh, this is and this temperatures is, now are in the low teens. Low teens, without question. You got a good wind gust there. You see the flags in the background. They want more. A timeout taken by Montana. I mean, they don't. They don't feel cold. They can still text with their fingers. I mean, mine would be numb. I couldn't text at that point. Well, those guys are standing with their shirts off. So, oh. I think they're a little bit cold. It's 48 to 10, Montana leading Northern Iowa. The first quarter was close. Since then, it's been a zoo here in Missoula. <laughs> it's all Montana. It's a Bears only zoo of the grizzly kind. Doing some calisthenics. Well, that's how they're staying warm. <laughs> it's got to be. Fourth and four coming up. I have been so impressed with the atmosphere here. We came in, everybody had told me about this place and how great it was. And Tom, I've heard for the last three years you talk about it. I have. And when we found out we were coming here, I was so excited. <laughs> And now you see why. I mean, it is just an awesome, awesome place to watch a college football game. On fourth and four, Nate Montana is in. And the handoff up the middle to Brett Kirshner. And Kirshner's going to be very close. Interesting to see if his leg was down. As he was, he clearly felt like he had not touched the ground and was fighting for extra yardage. Brett Kirshner giving it all he's got. It's going to be a turnover on down to Northern Iowa. We'll take over here. Don't forget tomorrow there'll be another team from this state of Montana on ESPN at noon Eastern time as Montana State will take on Sam Houston State. The winner will take on Montana next week. If it's Montana State that wins, that game will be played here in Missoula. If it's Sam Houston State that wins, that game will be played down in Texas. First down. The handoff is to Zach Cutcop. And Zach Wagonman. And that's what makes a tackle. Montana is really pushing for their in state rival to win tomorrow because the way you get this team is to get them out of here. If you can get Montana on your home turf, away from the elements, away from the venue, it, I think they're a different team. Not to take anything away from them, but the, it's not the same as having them here. The handoff again to Cutcock. And he brings it up across the 25-yard line. You know, you come here out to, to Montana, you get off the airplane, you see the mountains, you see snow in the mountains, you have commercials on TV. It, it kind of feels like Christmas. You see commercials for the Nutcracker. You've got football on. You've got everything. The feels festivities. Good. It feels great. And the the, the the crisp feel in this air. It, it just smell feels it. like wintertime. Smell a bonfire. It's great. I'm telling you. Third down and three coming up here for Northern Iowa. Again, to cut comp. Josh Stuberg with a tackle. And now fourth down coming up. We talk about the mountain right behind the stadium. This was earlier today. That big M, which is lit up. It's about a mile and a half zigzag walk up to that M. It's only about 700 vertical feet up the mountain to get there but the kids go up they light it up and i will say this it was pretty cool walking down onto the field last night and you see that you see that mountain right there and you think wow this is this is certainly imposing well it is imposing in that mountain being that this stadium sets right at the base of it just 
the noise stays right into this little confined bowl with the help of that big face right on the back side of it. And it sounds like there's 80,000 fans in this stadium, which is just under 27,000 when at full capacity. Again, coming up next is Sports Center. 48 to 10, Montana leading here over Northern Iowa. It's been a great season for the Northern Iowa Panthers. They will fall to 10 and 3. Their season comes to a close, 7 and 1 in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. They beat Wofford, Wofford last week, 28 to 21, to advance to this game. Their seventh playoff appearance under head coach Mark Farley. Now six seasons with ten or more wins. But their season will come to a close. Montana's will last at least one more week. Montana with 464 yards of offense tonight. They will move to 11 and 2. They finish 7 and 1 in the big sky. The home field dominance continues for Montana. Now 31 and 1 since the start of 2008. 19 and 1 in playoff games during the month of December here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Amazing numbers for the Montana Grizzlies. And Robin Flugrad and his staff can celebrate a victory as they now await the winner of that Montana State and Sam Houston State game tomorrow afternoon on ESPN at noon. They were behind 7-0. After that, they outscored Northern Iowa 48-3. Absolutely took over the game. And again, I go back to the patience of offensive coordinator Jonathan Smith to not abandon the run game when things were a little shaky early stick to the plan defense kept them in it field position was the key the entire night the defense for montana was on a long field was able to take some chances and pressure and the offense for northern iowa could never get out of being backed up in a very rowdy and hostile end zone on both ends of this stadium so montana advances to the semifinals. they will take on the winner of that montana state sam houston state game Tomorrow on ESPN at noon, Maine, Georgia Southern will play at 2 on ESPN 3. Montana, they came out. These fans are ready. They've been ready all day long. They got what they were looking for. A final score from Washington Grizzly Stadium, 48 to 10. Montana defeats Northern Iowa. Sports Center is on deck. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Tom Luganville and our entire ESPN production team, I am Justin Gutcher saying goodbye from Azula, Montana. Sports Center is next. <laughs>